praise God. What a joy to be here sharing the word of God. Just like uh, Pastor Tibby told um, just now, uh, at the end of the sermon, there will be an assessment. Uh, because now, yeah, that was a confirmation. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I think these days you guys are all familiar with online assessment, offline assessment. Today we have something uh, for online folks as well as all of you here. There will be a love assessment, okay? Uh, but don't worry, it's a self-test, self-assessment. Uh, don't copy, okay? <laughs> Praise God. Um, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. We want to exalt your name in our midst, Daddy. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will move mightily in our midst. Hallelujah. I hear a name, Siji, and I believe that the Lord is restoring you powerfully. The Lord is sending a mighty move of a restoration in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ore kaban toza kabaran. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to restore families today. I sense, that, um, I sense that because of the love of God flowing through the hearts of uh, people, relationships are going to be restored today. Hallelujah. Some are going to um, walk in the love of God and you will see physical healing happening in your bodies. I sense that some of you will be able to uh, forgive the offenses done against you. And you will blossom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kanto Zokorabashantiri. I hear the name Neha. I believe that the Lord is going to use you as a family uh, for, a, uh, for a great season of fearless leadership for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you. We want to thank you for what you have done for us, Daddy. What a great love you have poured into our hearts. I commit everyone here. I commit those who are uh, watching us online. Uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you move mightily in our midst. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. So let's begin with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Today's word, I have titled it, Love Restores. And I believe that this love is going to make mighty restoration in individual lives as well as in families specifically. Ephesians chapter 2 is one of my favorite portions that really uh, helps me, encourage me, uh, strengthen me to love God and serve God without expecting anything else, but as a love offering unto God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 onwards, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. So this phrase talks about two things. One is that you were dead. You didn't know how to keep yourself alive in the Lord. And the second thing is that you didn't know how to behave according to the will of God. Yeah? Whenever I say you, you can change it as we. Okay? Include me also in that list. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which once you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Basically, we were, the scripture says we were obeying Satan. And what did God do? But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love. Everybody say great love. Yeah, so if I summarize, the, uh, we had three problems. Even when we didn't know how to be alive in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Even when we didn't know what is our true need, the true need to be saved, the true need to have a savior, the true need to be eternal, even when we didn't know how to behave, because of his great love, he did what was required for us. Amen? Today, I want all of us to be encouraged edified that even when we didn't know any of this, if he knew how to meet our needs, how much more he will help us to walk 
in a life of blessing when we genuinely pursue God with the revelation that he has given us. Hallelujah. Please tell your neighbor, we have a great love backup. Many people walk in fear. Many people don't think actually that, that I have a love backup. But every time we, we think about what the Lord has done for us, every time we think about what this Father God has done for us, we need to remember that we have a great love backup in our Christian walk. This life, um, every time I, uh, I partake in the Lord's table, I remember two things. I remember two things. I, I conclude two things that I have this great love because of which I need not be fearful anymore. The second thing is I have this great love because of which I need to be faithful to my call. Hallelujah. Today I have this great love because of which I need not serve something else or someone else for survival because I know this great love will take care of me. Hallelujah. I have found out the greatest love. So today I want all of us to be encouraged that even when we didn't know anything about salvation, even when we didn't know anything about our true need, the Lord, because of his great love, he restored us back to the great plan that he had for us. Hallelujah. Restoration of human beings started with the Lord's love. And today as children of God, that is what God is expecting us also to operate in that love. Pastor Bill Johnson of Bethel Church in Reading, he says, whenever God restores something, he restores it to a place greater than what was before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whenever God restores something, he restores it to a place greater than it was before. So today, if you sense that actually I need restoration in a particular area of my life, don't ask for the same level. You believe God for a greater level of restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there is a promise of, of, uh, of the Lord's uh, anointing upon your life, and if you are not able to operate in that anointing right now, you need to believe that God is going to pour out a greater anointing in my life, greater physical strength in my life, greater financial abundance in my life, greater, greater, because whenever the Lord is restoring he will do in a greater portion. Because that's what we see in, uh, in, um, in the life of Adam and Eve as well. When mankind, when they sinned, they were separated from the presence of God, from the physical presence of God. And when God restored that through Jesus Christ, today... We are not at all separated from the physical presence. We are, we have God in us. Hallelujah. Adam and, uh, and Eve had God with them. Today we have God with us and in us. Hallelujah. Whenever he restores something, I want you to take this home today. Whenever he restores something, he restores it in a greater level. Ask your neighbor, are you ready for a greater level? Hallelujah. So we saw that scripture wherein, the, wherein in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 says, But God, because of his great love, he saved us. He saved us. He just redeemed us from a destruction that we were heading to. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So God is so particular that the glory has to go only to him and him alone. There is a great redemption that has happened. A great restoration that has happened. You couldn't earn it. We couldn't earn it. It is a free gift of God. And I don't want anybody to boast about this because this is a free gift of God because of his great love. Hallelujah. Today, I want to ask a question for, for our self-assessment. Is salvation the greatest joy of my life? 
I think this is a very important question. I want to tell you if salvation is, a, is the greatest joy of your life, many other problems will fade away. Many other problems will fade away. I want you to know that, know that no other discouragement, no other disappointment is worse than being in hell. Hallelujah. I truly believe that God did a great work. If I'm not able to be grateful for the salvation that God has given me, I think the, 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 there is a great possibility that I don't know or I'm not aware of the deep or depth of the pit from which I am saved. You know, I remember a time wherein, wherein I didn't have any challenges financially. That time actually, before food and all, I used to sometimes forget to say grace. Somebody had to um, remind, uh, shall we pray for the food? Uh, shall we say grace? Sometimes we keep a reminder before lunch, say grace. Um, but then there came a situation wherein food was not available all three times a day, or rather all five times a day. Yeah? Then no reminders were required. Then after that season or after those days, when food came in, no reminders. Thank you, Jesus. Because I was sure that this didn't come from anyone else. Yeah? And, and, and I started praying genuine prayers. Even for blessing or saying grace. Because say, for, for most of the things actually we have a protocol, right? Lord bless the food, um, bless it to the body. Amen. And I think, I think prayer started to flow from the heart. Daddy, thank you. Thank you. I want to loudly proclaim that you are my provider. Amen. Amen. So today, today I want us to know that if we are not able to celebrate the gift, the greatest gift that God has ever given us, salvation, if you are not able to celebrate, if you are not able to rejoice, yeah? if you are singing like, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy. Yeah? and you don't have joy, I think you need help from the Spirit of God. You need revelation. You need to know that actually from what a dirty and deep pit that we have been saved. Amen? Amen? Speak to your neighbor. Salvation is so precious. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible... The Bible tells us this salvation is so important. Can we check few scriptures? Matthew chapter 5 verse 29 and 30 says, If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's not talking about somebody else's eyes. It's about our eyes, okay? Yeah? Don't take this as a commandment now today and just uh, be obedient and all, yeah? Um, so if your right eye causes to sin, causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to cast into hell. The Bible is encouraging everybody to somehow be saved. Even at the cost of your vision and at the cost of your productivity. The Bible is saying that even if you don't have eyes and you are not able to get the right direction. And even if you are just forfeiting the chance of being productive in the rest of your days. Be saved. Be saved because the hell is such a torment. And it is from that place the Lord has saved us. Hallelujah. It is from that place the Lord has redeemed us. And the Lord is asking us, hey, because of my great love, I have given you a path, a journey of restoration. Will you walk into it? Will you step into this journey? But the problem is most of the people... 
or most of us sometimes, we counsel God. We tell God, please don't overreact. It's okay. I know that uh, you have great plans for restoration, but please touch only my finance area. I lost 10 lakh. Now pastor said, actually, your restoration is more than 10 lakh. So please give me 11 lakh. I have faith, 15 lakh God. Yeah? We want to have our plan of restoration while God has his own plans of restoration. Amen? It is the Lord who says, commit your plans to me and trust in him and he shall bring it to pass. Sometimes I feel as if we telling the Lord, commit your plans to me. Yeah? And you trust in you, but let me approve it. Yeah? There is a constant tussle between the planning and the plans and the planner. Indirectly, there is a constant tussle who is the leader. Yeah? The Bible says, I love the ways of the Lord. When we, uh, when we grow over it, okay? <laughs> Sometimes we feel so upset that, that the Lord is not giving something that we really want. Yeah? But when we mature in our journey and when we know the Lord, we know that actually, oh, the plans that he has is, is good. It's good. Hallelujah. So the Bible is giving high premium, high importance that somehow we should be saved. And he is saying that I have a journey of restoration for you. Because Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship. The Lord has purchased us. We didn't have any opportunity, any possibility to be saved. We didn't know what was salvation. We didn't know where we are heading to. We didn't know anything. And because of his great love, he brought us into this great plan of redemption, a great plan of restoration for the actual design and plan for our life. Hallelujah. And now the, the Lord says, we are his workmanship. Is that fair, my dear church? Is that fair? Is that fair that we are his workmanship? Yeah? Because he has purchased us. It is absolutely fair. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Everybody say good works. Any good work that is coming from the Lord, I call it the work of God. Yeah, Deva Vela. Great work, God work, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The Lord is not waiting for you to say yes and then, okay, she said yes, he said yes, let me plan her, uh, uh, something for her. No, 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 the Lord has planned beforehand. And now the Lord is asking, will you walk in this journey of restoration? Will you step into this plan of restoration? And for that, it is so important for us that we humble down. We humble down. I love the, the, the ways of the Lord. The Lord didn't say that actually uh, grace will be given to uh, the most uh, tallest or, uh, or uh, grace will, not be, uh, will be given to the one who has scored 99%. Yeah? The Lord said grace will be given to the one that humbles down. Amen? The grace will be given to the, to the one that humbles down. Anybody who is arising in pride, the Lord says, even if you don't find any other enemy, I will oppose you. You are short of enemies there, I will take that quotation, I will oppose you. Yeah? The Bible is asking us, we humble down knowing that actually we don't deserve anything. Some people have so much of entitlements. So much of, if I have to come to church, then um, the, the then, uh, temperature should be less than uh, 20 degree and uh, higher than, uh, then I should have a free cab and uh, I should have uh, so and so. If I want to serve, then I should have sure mic and uh, the, the media team should be at least 10 member team. Yeah? The conferences that I preach, uh, I really don't understand, maybe because I'm not that level, I'm okay. But today when I look at Ephesians chapter 2, 
verse 1 to 7, I understand that I didn't deserve anything. If you want a merit-based award, you will get free admission to hell. That is what we actually owe or deserve because of, because of our merit. Everything that we have today in Christ is because of his love. And when he has done that mighty act, can I ask of sure Mike? Can I ask about the conference size? Can I ask about the temperature? Can I ask about any provision? Lord, I want to offer my life as a sacrifice unto you. If you give food, I will eat and serve. If you give clothes, I will wear and serve. Lord, if you give a hall, I will worship you in the hall. Lord, if you give something, Lord, if you give a work, I will honor you there. We should offer our life as an act or a life of gratitude unto the Lord. With the loaves and the fish that the Lord has given you. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord is asking us to respond or give this life as a gratitude offering unto the Lord. That's what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I have plans for you today. A lot of people sometimes come to me and, and, um, and ask, Pastor, can you pray that this is the course? Pastor, can you please? I can definitely pray for that. No worries about that. I want you to know that actually that the Lord has planned everything for you. The first thing that I generally ask people when they say, I want to know this, have you prayed? Do you know that actually the Lord has planned everything for you till the last day on this earth? He's a great planner. The first thing that I want to encourage you is that today you believe that the Lord has great plans for you and ask the Lord, Daddy, how can I be of great glory unto you? Will you use me? Will you use this broken vessel so that I may give glory unto you? Hallelujah. So we know that the Lord redeemed us. The Lord did a mighty act and the Lord is uh, giving us a journey of restoration. Yeah? How can we be effective in this journey of restoration. I'm not going to talk about different as aspects of love because it's a huge, 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 huge topic, but I want to talk about love in the context of restoration. The first point I want to share, if you want to have a restored life according to the plan of God, is to embrace love. Embrace love. A lot of people are not able to progress in their lives because they have not received this love that the Lord has poured into them. They know that God loves me here. But it needs to come one foot down. We need to know it here. This love has to be a reality for us. I remember that there is a, there is a great difference between the things that we learn and the things that we Things that, that has become part of you. Yeah? I remember the recitations that we, uh, or, or I studied and first time, I had everything here. But the moment I stood in front of the class, I forgot. First line became third line, third line became second line, second line became fourth line. And one word, or, or one thing I said confidently, thank you. And I'm sure all the audience also would have said, thank you. Then you know here that the Lord loves me. And sometimes in other situations, we don't know. We don't know. We fumble. We fumble. We are not able to represent Jesus. We are not able to take the right decision. We are not able to honor God in those situations because, because we feel scared. We are devoid of that true love. That's a theory that we have learned here. Yeah? But when this love becomes a reality in our life, we know that whatever happens, this Lord, I need not, I don't need someone else to come and tell me that the Lord loves you. I know it. this is so real for me. And what the scripture talks about this love? Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our heart by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. 
Oh, I remember my early Christian life wherein uh, I was so passionate to study the Word. And, um, and I, I read the Word, I loved taking notes, but I didn't know the Holy Spirit this intimately, how I am able to be with the Holy Spirit now. Uh, so I will study and I will take notes and I'm prepared that if I meet somebody, uh, how can I share the gospel? How can I talk about the goodness of God, God, God? So I had all this information in the mind. And then suddenly one of my friends comes and says, hey, 50,000 mistakes in the Bible. And then I'm gone. Then he suddenly said, see, the meaning of this word is that and that is this and this is that. And suddenly all my teaching uh, is not uh, fitting to what he said and it resulted in me having doubt in the text or in the Bible that I read. But then when I knew the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was not a theory. The Holy Spirit became a reality in my life. I knew that God is living inside of me. I can hear the Holy Spirit. I remember one day, um, one day someone told um, Billy Graham, the great preacher, uh, that your God is dead. So Billy Graham smiled and responded, oh really? I didn't know that because today morning also I spoke to him. Yeah. Whatever the accusation or whatever argument came to him, his reality was greater than the argument. And when we desire an intimacy with the Holy Spirit, when we walk with the Holy Spirit, the love of the Holy Spirit is a greater reality than any obstacle that comes our way. Hallelujah. So today I want to encourage each one of you, have a great desire to know the Holy Spirit. Have a great desire. If you haven't heard the Holy Spirit till now, don't just act it up. Yeah? You might get Oscar, but still you ha won't be happy. Yeah? Christian life is not a great drama. Yeah? Christian life is a life of fullness in the presence of God. Amen? And you have a heavenly father who has accepted you, loved you, and done everything for you, even when you didn't know anything about him. Then might as well, can we be genuine before him? Holy Spirit, I don't know you. Holy Spirit, everybody speaks about you. Holy Spirit, will you please reveal yourselves to me? Holy Spirit, I love to hear your voice. Make genuine prayers to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have a lot of peer pressure in believing churches. Everybody else will say, I heard the Holy Spirit. I heard the Holy Spirit. Yeah? So spiritual peer pressure. Yeah? Uh, don't worry, be yourself. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. Yeah? Walk, your journey is very different. Your race is very different. Keep being comfortable in your skin and keep growing in the Holy Spirit. Yeah? Tell the Holy Spirit, I, I really love to have visions and dreams from you. This is something that is mentioned in the scripture. Will you give me that opportunity? I want to really explore all possibilities in you. We have only one life. Yeah? Let's have a great desire to explore all possibilities with the Holy Spirit. So the second point, I'm moving on. So the first thing was embrace this love. Because if we don't receive this love, we will not walk healed in this restoration. Even though sometimes we may progress in this journey, we might be all grumpy, itchy, and uh, it'll be difficult. Yeah? Receive and embrace this love because the Lord is giving you this love. The second thing, respond to this love. Once you embrace this love, respond to God. Respond to God with the love that he has poured in us. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. God has loved us. God has deposited this love in us. We have the ability to love God back. We have the ability to love God. And uh, one preacher uh, said like this, do you know which is the greatest sin? The greatest sin is the violation of the greatest commandment. Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 and 38 says, Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Yeah. So, 
God is wanting us, God is asking us to respond to this love. How can we start loving God? I think we can, a great place is to imagine if God was a person in front of me, how I would have loved him. I would have honored his presence. Yeah, I would have honored his presence. The Bible uh, says that um, if you love me, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That is another way of honoring God. Whenever you sense the presence of God, whenever there is prayer happening, whenever there is worship happening, be genuine to honor God. Yeah? Be genuine. I'm, I'm being very practical. How can we honor God in prayer and worship? But I'm not distracted. I'm not checking the latest Twitter post during the worship time. I'm not thinking about the latest uh, story about that film star or, or whatever. Let's honor God. Amen. Let's honor the presence of God. When somebody is praying, you, you partner with them. You listen to them what they are praying and say, Amen. Partner with them. Honor God. Worship God. When, whenever you sense the presence of God, honor God. Love God. And then our Christian faith, Christian life uh, is not always a, a surprise test. Most of the time it is like an open-ended exam wherein we can, or, or not open, open book exam wherein we can refer the Bible. We can understand what the scripture says and we can honor God in our decisions. Some people say, oh, no, no, uh, Pastor, no, 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 I'm going to do this. Pastor, I have taken a decision to go to Antarctica and I am expecting that God will stop if this is not his will. So sometimes I feel like saying, okay, I have also taken a decision to punch you on the nose and if it is not God's will, let God stop. I haven't said this to anyone. I've thought. So when it is convenient for us, we want to take that step for honoring God's will. And when it is painful for us, Pastor, you shouldn't do that. Yeah? Honor God genuinely. And when we are faithful in the little revelation that we have, the Lord will give you more. The Lord will trust you with more secrets. The Lord will trust you with more and more revelations in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Respond to God in love. Speak to your neighbor. Let's respond to this love. And do you know we have, we have heard this um, verse many times that love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Yeah? And in one of the sessions that uh, Sona took to the, the church office, she said, even this word love, the word used is agape. That we have to agape God, which is unconditional love. Which means we have to love God when we have the mood or without mood. We have to love the Lord with or without job. We have to love the Lord in the morning and in the evening. We have to love the Lord whether you have a feeling or not a feeling. Yeah? We have to love the Lord whether our marriage happened or not. This is God is calling to a standard of loving God unconditionally. Hallelujah. And that session really blessed me. And from that day onwards, even yesterday, I was, um, um, somebody was telling me, uh, Pastor Jujo, uh, anytime we text you, you are always saying you are blessed and highly favored. And, uh, but we got to know that actually you were a little unwell last week. I said me being unwell doesn't have any connection with the fact that I'm blessed and highly favored. Because I want, to, uh, I, want to, I want to link my joy today only with the greatest gift that God has given me and that is salvation. Because no other things in my life can ever match up to what God has done in the Calvary for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are blessed and highly favored. 
as a church i pray that we will be able to love god unconditionally whatever things uh, many a times i think i think we we want to follow god because we want things to happen we want things to happen in my, in, in our lives and sometimes we conclude that this didn't happen in my life because uh, because god doesn't love me i wonder how god will respond if we tell you don't love me he gave himself on the cross for us yeah sometimes in our relationships sometimes in our marriage yeah if our spouse tells us you don't love me itself we didn't die for them yeah we didn't give our blood for them that itself will pull us down and i'm thinking actually what god will think when we say that you don't love i mean you don't love us ridiculous right and i pray that the lord will help us to unconditionally love god and i pray god will give us the grace to keep that love as a separate track without any link to what we have in this earthly life whether we have money whether we have clothes whether we have food whether we have a car whether we have a home whatever it is we are called to love god unconditionally take that journey take that decision today lord nothing should hinder me from this great love hallelujah and the bible says there is no fear in love 1 john 4:18 says there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment i think this is a very powerful verse god wants to love us god wants to fill our hearts with love because fear will be driven out only by perfect love and fear has torment we cannot be part of this journey of great restoration by being scared or with a lot of fear in our hearts that is why god is asking us in this journey of restoration you be loved you walk in love there is no need of fear even though there are things that doesn't go in your way when you know that the love of god is backing me up the presence of the holy spirit is with me that fills you with joy that gives you strength there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear amen so i spoke about these two points embrace this love respond to this love and when we respond to this love as we saw in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for great god works so the third point that i want to tell you would be is after you embrace this love and then you responded to this love you serve in love you serve in love because as you serve you will move forward in your journey of restoration because the bible says the plan was that you are created in christ jesus and there is a plan that has been laid out for you there are some good works that has been ordained for you you need to step into it serve in love here i'm going to dwell a little bit and i'm going to start the assessment yeah first corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 to 3 very common portion i think in almost all weddings we hear this but our assessment will be based on the syllabus okay the scripture says though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels what are the tongues of men spanish english oxford accent british accent english uh, whatever accent yeah even though i know all the languages and even if i'm speaking to all angels yeah but have not love i have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal basically i will be someone who makes some noise nothing else and though i have the gift of prophecy oh by for example if you are very good in ministry okay and though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith i'm a miracle uh, crusade special specialist pastor every day yeah even if i'm able to do all those things so i that i could remove mountains and have not love i am the bible could have been little kind to say something but the bible says i'm nothing 
are you able to see how much this love is such a crucial component of our life? And then he talks about compassion ministry. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, yeah, I have give, given everything uh, to people, and I have burned myself also. Lord, I want to decrease and be nothing. Yeah? I have burned myself also. But have not love. It profits me nothing. Very discouraging, right? But the Lord is calling for us calling us for a journey that is filled with love. The Lord is making it clear that if you have the tongues of men, you better have love. Do you speak to angels? You better have love. Are you a prophet? You have amazing ministry? You better have love. So because this is so important, and we have heard this passage so many times, we read and move forward. The next few verses talks about what is this kind of love. So based on that, I have created an assessment for each one of us. It's a self-assessment. Don't ask anybody else because sometimes we'll be so discouraged. Yeah. So self-assessment, okay? And then the scripture says, love forgives. So I have 14 questions in this assessment. So some people are still looking at me. I'm serious. Yeah. I have 14 questions in this assessment. The first question, did I forgive yesterday? Okay, this assessment is only for yesterday. And this is supposed to be done every day, maybe just before you sleep, so that you will get enough points to pray for you. Yeah, question number one. The Bible says love forgives. Did I forgive or did I give him nice? Or did I curse him? Or did I beat him? If you forgive, you get one mark. If you cursed him, minus one. If you didn't do anything, zero. Okay? That's our point system. Question number two. Was I kind or cruel? One, zero. Minus one. Question number three. Did I rejoice when my friend had a blessing in his life? Or was I envious? Guys, this, is, this, is, this was life-changing for me, you know? This was life-changing. I literally scored this in my life. I literally used to track this many nights. And I have prayed unto the Lord, Lord, this is not in my control. I am not able to be good. I'm not able to be good. I'm not able to forgive. And I want to tell you, in this little years of ministry, one of the, it's my opinion, it's my personal opinion, one of the major factor, I think, which prevents people from blossoming which prevents from people being restored into the plan of God is unforgiveness. Because you cannot take this journey of love without forgiving or without being proud. How can I say that you are proud? Because the Bible says, please forgive the other person because he is good. Or, and the Bible is not saying that because the other person is good or bad. The Bible is saying in Colossians that forgive as Christ forgave you. Would you want to humble down to that verse or would you want to say, oh, Venda. I read that verse, but I take my stance. Behold where you stand. Amen? So, so that was question number three. I think some are becoming uncomfortable. Lord, no, no, that was not a sign. That was not... <laughs> Yeah. So the first question was, did I forgive or was I, or did I curse or did I retaliate? Was I kind or cruel? Did I rejoice or envy? Fourth question, that is based on the verse, love doesn't parade itself. Yeah. Did I give the glory to God in everything yesterday or did I parade myself? 
you know, I was so busy, I was talking to Mr. George Bush. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, Payangra uh, busy, so I was very busy, I just had, uh, you know, tea with um, uh, the latest uh, president, you know. Parayana uh, you know. Did I give God the glory or did I parade myself? Question number four. If you, give, uh, if you gave God the glory, you get one mark. If you uh, did a good parade, uh, minus one. If you didn't do anything, zero. Okay. Fifth question. Based on the scripture um, that love puffs up. Sorry, uh, love doesn't puffs up. Okay, not that puffs. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, question number five. Was I a blessing to somebody yesterday or was I puffed up yesterday? I'm sure that this doesn't need any kind of explanation. Question number six. Was I considerate or was I rude? The Bible says love doesn't behave rudely. Question number seven. The Bible says love doesn't seek its own. Was I caring to others' needs or was I selfish? Question number eight, the Bible says, love doesn't provoke, get, love doesn't get provoked. Was I gentle yesterday or was I being provoked? Or also was I provocative? Yeah. Question number nine, the Bible says, love doesn't have evil thoughts. Was I holy in my thoughts or carnal? Question number 10. Love rejoices in truth and not in iniquity. Yeah? Did I rejoice in truth yesterday or did I rejoice very much in the sin that I did yesterday? Yeah? Question number 11. We are coming to the last portion. The Bible says, love bears all things. Yeah. Did I bear everything yesterday or did I grumble and complain yesterday? Question number 12, love believes all things. Did I believe or did I ask God three, four times yesterday, God, are you there? Are you there? Are you alive? Yeah. Did I believe or was I doubtful? Question number 13, love hopes all things. Even in the midst of all the challenges, concerns, problems that I have, am I still hopeful or am I discouraged yesterday? Last question, the Bible says love endures. Yeah. Did I think about enduring the hardships that I have yesterday? Or did I think about, God, this has to somehow pass. I feel like giving up. Even if you get a low score on this, I'm not trying to tell you that you are a terrible sinner. The Bible says all men have fallen short of the glory of God. We all are equal at the foot of the cross. But I want to tell you that this is a great indicator in our land, 40% is the pass mark. Yeah. So to pass, at least in this 14 questions, you need to get six marks, okay? If you don't get six marks, please be at home and pray. You need love from God. You need love from God. Because if we, do, we are not filled with this love, if we don't have a good love score, and if we go out, do you know what is going to happen? We will speak rudely. We will provoke others. We will be selfish. World is not going to be a better place. But if we grow in love, if we see the need of love in our lives, if we see, if we are able to see that the love of God is not shaping up well in my life, I need more of this love in my life. If you have a good score, 
I want to tell you, let nothing stop you from serving the body of Christ. Let nothing stop you from approaching people because I want you to know that people sense love much more than preaching. The world is looking for someone who loves. Hallelujah. I worked for so many days on my love score. I used to pray, Lord, I'm not able to forgive, Lord. I'm not able to forgive. Lord, this person said that I'm nothing and I gave him nicely, Lord. Lord, I couldn't do it. Even though I enjoyed at that time, I don't want to continue like this. I prayed, I humbled down. I wanted to change my behavior. I want to change my behavior. I remember how much I have made my marriage also difficult by being a stickler to certain things. So now did you do this, did you do that? The shelf is open, the tap is open. Yeah. Now all those things need to be closed. Yeah. But I think there is no reason why we should stop love from flowing. A child of God's first ministry, first initiative should be to be filled with love because this love will take the initiative to do good even when the other person do, doesn't know anything about his true need. That's what Jesus did for us. Amen? So I want to encourage you. Work on your love score. Every night before sleeping, rate yourself. It would be a terrible situation if you ask somebody else to rate you. Yeah. I have not taken that step till now. Yeah. Yeah. But even with self-assessment, I have so many points to pray now. Yeah. Lord, I didn't do this. But I want to tell you that this has really helped me. Not this template or assessment. Praying to the Lord specifically to help in certain areas. Lord, I saw that driver. He just took a close. Oh, that was not a God encounter. That was a close encounter. Lord, I stared at him, Lord. I just, I just said a thousand words in that one stare. Lord, I want to be loving on the road. Lord, I knew that actually that lady and that child wanted to cross, but I just took my car, Daddy. I'm so sorry. That was not being loving. That was not being loving. I want to let you know that the Holy Spirit will change you. And when you love and when your score is up, do you know what's going to happen? You will be considerate to people. You will be kind. You will be loving and you will do what is helpful for them and they will have their journey of restoration. And this is the year of revival and restoration. Yeah? And we have to arise and we have to grow in the love of God so that many will have this amazing journey of restoration in the Lord. Yeah? And as a last point, we know what the, the Lord said. That there is a price for being a person of love. John 12, 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. There will be a price that you have to pay because you choose love. Sometimes you may have to give more time for the things of God or when you know that actually more than my interest, the person has a need. You may have to give more time. You may have to tirelessly uh, uh, serve. Yeah, But the Bible says when we sacrifice, there is a much greater and a bigger fruit. When Jesus gave his own life, he was able to be accessible or living inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible says, you will do greater things than what he did. Amen? Amen? So I believe the Holy Spirit will help us as a church to love 
And I believe and I declare over the church. And as you arise in this love of God, as you grow in this love of God, you will see significant restoration in, in families. Significant restoration in your marriage. Significant restoration with your, uh, uh, with, with your children. You will bless many families because people cannot ignore the love that is flowing through them. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you for this time. We want to give you praise. Or we want to thank you for the great love with which you restored us. Daddy, today as a church, we want to pray. We want to pray that we will walk in your love. We will walk in your love. Give us the grace. Oh, Daddy, we want to commit our love score to you, Daddy. Each one has areas to grow. And I pray, Daddy, that we will humble down. We will admit our weaknesses. We will admit our growth areas. And we will surrender to you, Daddy. And we have faith that the one who called us in this journey will fill us with this great love. We want to commit our lives unto you. We want to commit our families. We want to commit our relationships. We want to commit our vision unto you that we will flood this earth with your love. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.